Let's get ready to rumble! Hello, dog lovers. How is it going? Hope you're doing well. Welcome to live show another week and uh, we're going to talk about in this video in, the, in this live video all about beagles mostly mainly beagles and if you have any other dog as dog breed feel free to um, ask your questions as well but today i'm dedicating mainly to beagles all about beagles because I know most of my viewers are beagle owners and they want to talk about beagles. So we're going to talk about and uh, and also uh, have a Q&A about, about beagles. But again, feel free to ask your questions. Uh, any breed, any topic, any um, problem or issue that you have with your dog, feel free to ask your questions. And again, as, also, as always, um, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well so you will get notified as soon as i post my next video or if i go live and today also you have the option again as uh, using the super chat option if you want to uh, your questions to be answered for sure in a moment i'm going to start asking the questions few of uh, the viewers are joining at the moment and uh, we'll wait a little bit till everybody comes in Weir is uh, Weir is from uh, Weir is uh, the first one first comment and says hi thank you for being here uh, Luminar's art is in is in the house Ghost Hunter is here um, and and then Ghost Hunter says hi and I'll get into uh, your questions as well, Ghost Hunter and everybody else. And uh, Tavlin B. Joy is here as well. So let's talk about beagles and what they are special for and what what is it about beagles that we love beagles. And before I start the show, if you are from India, which most of my viewers are from India, um, I wanted to ask you, and if you could answer this question to me, you know, I have, I'm going to answer your questions, but ask, I want to ask you a question as well. If you are a viewer from India and you have a beagle, if you're a beagle owner, would you tell me why is it that beagles are so popular in India? I've noticed that beagle owners in India is very high and beagles tend to be very popular recently maybe i'm not sure if it's been that way um beagles been popular forever um but i just want to know why is it that beagles are popular in india what is it why did you get a beagle in general also comment in the chat area or in the, the comment area let me know what the answer why is it that you like why is it why is that that you like beagles and why did you get a beagle and why is it that beagles are popular in india all right so one of the things that i wanted to start the show with is that beagles just like any other breed are you know difficult dogs in in many ways if whether you are a new dog owner or not but every dog every breed is difficult has challenges of, of its own uh, if you don't know what you're doing so if you don't know about dogs in general it doesn't matter what breed you have you you will have difficulties and challenges uh, and beagles are one of those breeds and dogs that have their own challenges and difficulties to raise and have a, a perfect beagle dog. So by the way, I have a doggy daycare. So there are dogs uh, in the background. You'll hear them barking and all that. So don't mind that. It's actually, I like it when they bark and do crazy stuff. It makes it more dog doggy, uh, uh, 
show, right? <laughs> All right. So beagles in general, and that's that's my beagle. That's Harvey. Harvey. Uh, Harvey. This one. This one is barking now. Uh, so yeah. So beagles are a little bit challenging in general if you don't know what the, you don't know about dogs. But in general, every dog breed has its challenges they're difficult and they're challenging to raise and uh, have have a dog who's ha, has a perfect behavioral uh, traits and well behaved that's because if you for example if you don't know how to drive a car for example uh, it doesn't matter uh, if i give you bmw or i give you um Volkswagen, or if I give you uh, Toyota, it doesn't matter what brand of car I give you. If you don't, if you don't know how to drive it, uh, you're not going to drive it. You're not going to benefit from that car, right? Um, all you know, brands of cars, for example, I'm going to go a little bit in form of uh, explaining the idea. Brands of cars, it, it, all cars do the same thing. You, know, you sit in it and you drive it, go from A to B. But performance of each car is the, the difference, right? Same thing ha happens with dogs. You know, all breeds of dogs are the same. The only difference is that each breed has its own uh, drive. Each breed has its own traits. It's, each breed has its own um, specialty uh, uh, traits that that breed or that dog can uh, offer, right? So the core of everything is the same. Dogs are all the same, no matter what breed they are. Now, if you have a, a working breed, that's one of the traits, for example, is that you have to understand that a working breed of dog you need to work them all the time. It doesn't mean that you have to put them to work, but you have to constantly and all the time, you have to uh, offer them some mental and physical stimulation in order to uh, be healthy. Whereas, um, you know, toy breeds, they don't really need that much um, work, like mm, stimulation but they still need the same thing as a working breed needs. A, a, a hound breeds, which beagles are one of them, um, they have also you know, the same thing any, any other dog needs, but in this case, we are dealing with a breed of dog that has been designed and bred for hunting uh, doing some tasks, doing some work. So one of them is to, uh, one of the works that they do is, for example, they work at the airports where they can sniff out, uh, in, especially, for example, uh, in Vancouver, uh, there's a beagle who works in the airport, and I've met him and I've seen him, um, see him all the time. Uh, he works as um, scent dog he works as uh, uh, the dog that goes and sniffs people's um, the travelers suitcases to see if they're they're smuggling or bringing in any food related content and if if there if this dog this beagle senses that there is food in the suitcase he sits that's the way he he tells the the officer that there's there's food or something like that in the in the suitcase so that's one of the work he, he, the beagles are doing the other work that they do is they go and you know when they are hunting uh, the hunters use them mostly too is when they're hunting they what they do they release the uh, the hounds release the beagles to go and find the prey um, when the prey is in the run. So the hunt, the hunt starts with the beagles chasing the, uh, the, the hunt prey and finding it and 
the prey they kind of get uh, surround the the prey and the beagle starts barking or howling to let the hunter know that there is the prey right here so the hunter comes and takes care of the situation and all that which is ugly i don't recommend doing it i don't have fun enjoy doing it or i don't enjoy when thing people use for that purpose i don't support that in general but that's what they have been traditionally bred for so you have to understand that this breed of dog beagle has the ability to hunt which means they have the ability to scent you know they work in the airport they're hunting scent they are scent dogs so what that means is they need to use their nose all the time so knowing that you have to allow a beagle to work uh, its nose. So you have two options with the beagle. You can either let the beagle use its nose and work, work naturally, or you can let the beagle to turn off that drive, which is a different story. I work with my own beagles. I don't encourage them to work on that because I don't want them to constantly be turned on and uh, go after you know chasing animals and doing their scent work i want them to be a pet dog that's my 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 pre uh, preferences i want them to be pet dog i like i love the beagle you know external internal concept of the beagle breed but uh, i don't want them to work like a beagle i don't want them to have the drive to be a beagle and you know uh, do the beagle things right i encourage them to do a little bit not not too much so what i want to say ba basically is is in general you need to know what to do with your beagle right in, you need to know how to understand a dog first of all it first comes the dog first and then comes the breed and then comes your dog right first comes the dog in general you have to understand about dogs and then you have to understand about beagles and then you have to for, uh, understand what your your particular your dog that beagle that you have is right so i'll give you an example of what i mean so i know about dogs i know about beagles and each one of my beagles right so jonah Harvey and Annie are beagles, right? So Jonah was a type of beagle that he was uh, driven by scent. He wanted to work. He wanted to chase things. He wanted to find things. So he was very active in that form. He was a real beagle. Um, not that the others are not real beagles, but he was showing me the real personality of Beagle. So I had to work a lot with him to turn off that drive so I could manage and control him. Whereas Harvey, for example, he doesn't have that drive. He doesn't, you know, it's not that he's broken. It just doesn't have the drive. He, you know, a squirrel or something can pass by. He doesn't, he never, he doesn't chase things. He doesn't go after um, live animals and things like that. Just because he, his drive is not there, but he's a perfect dog. Uh, whereas Annie, uh, she is more, she's a mixed beagle breed dog. So she has the traits of a beagle and traits of a collie as well she's a mix of a collie and beagle and basset and a lab and a boxer but you know all those traits of those mixed breeds are there and i'm working with all of them right so i'm i know those personality of annie so i'm working with her personality and she likes to work she likes to chase she likes to sniff all that so i get a combo of everything so Understanding the personality of each dog also is very important. So, as I said, the first layer is for understanding dogs in general. So, your goal should be to learn about dogs. So, that brings me to 
for you to understand that you need to learn about dogs. And the way you're going to learn about dogs is by uh, studying, you know, understanding dogs. And there are a few options. You know, you can read books, you can watch videos, you can watch uh, shows and things like that. But all of them is... All of them are just a um, band-aid solution. You have to really, really understand your dog. Yeah? And to for that, I offer you uh, in my online course. You can choose one of my online courses, but the one that I want you to pick, if you are a dog lover and if you wanna learn about dogs and, and then beagles and then your dog is this one. Uh, the basic obedience and more without the use of treats. In, this is the course that I want you to take advantage of because I have a, a sale going on, as you can see, 50% off. And this sale ends by the end of the weekend. Uh, I have, it was supposed to end yesterday, but I have extended it just because of this live show. I have extended it till Sunday the 4th. Um, so go ahead and take advantage of this and go and register and, and let me help you to become an educated dog lover and beagle owner. And we dive in in everything that you need to know about dogs. So take advantage of the, the sale that is happening and register. This is not to tell you that I'm trying to sell things, it's just to help you to become an educated dog owner, an educated dog lover, an educated beagle owner, right? Because I would say 99% of your problems are going to be solved by taking this course. There's just too many content uh, information and content in here uh, that I, I, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but Let's just sample a few of them. So in this course, first of all, obviously, you're going to learn the, the concept of play and praise reward system, with, uh, which is a unique method of dog training where we don't use treats or food or aversive tools or punishment or domination or being alpha. We use play and praise as a reward to train your beagle or your dog. So... And you learn the basics of it. You understand the concept itself. And then you're going to learn how dogs learn, right, using play and praise method. And then you're going to learn also a dog's five essential needs. This is something that I always say in my live videos. I say in my, most of my videos, most dog owners, they don't understand why is it that their dog is behaving this way or that way. That's because you're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs. And that, those are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. And we go through them in details in this uh, chapter as well. You also learn about correction and rewards and tools that you need to use. Basically, you're not going to use any tools because we're using play and praise. But I dive in a little bit more about correction and reward. Uh, you learn the basic obedience command lesson. There are six basic obedience commands that you have to teach your beagle or dog no matter what. They are sit, stay, come, heal, down, stand. So you're going to learn all those commands. You're going to learn also loose leash walking. Why is it important to teach a dog loose leash walking? It's because if you don't know how to walk your dog properly, you're not going to be able to train them as well. And if you can't train them, you can't walk them either. So you have to learn basic obedience uh, level of loose leash walking. And you're going to learn all the commands and everything that you need to know. So the last command is stand command. You're going to learn the stand command. You're going to learn the sit and lie down command. You're going to learn the weight command. You're going to learn uh, heel command. There are games that you can play with your dogs. There's so many content in this course. So I encourage you to take a moment and uh, check it out. It will be in the description area, the link and the information to get to this page and get started and register. I encourage you to join. 
and um, learn and hopefully I will see you inside there. So let's start with um, going through the questionnaire and talking about dog, beagles and dogs in general. But again, as I said today, we are mostly focused on um, beagles. Feel free to ask any questions, but mostly we are going to be talking about beagles. And I'm going to be selecting the questions uh, because most of the questions, uh, if it's repeated or if it's uh, something that I don't think it's necessary to answer, I, I will just go through the question. So don't feel bad if I don't select your question. If you want me to for sure to select your question, use this uh, super chat option. All right, so this is one of the questions that I often get, which is, uh, you know, how to stop puppy biting? And it comes from Ghost Hunter. And I'm gonna, you know, I have talked about this a lot, actually. Puppy biting is one of those issues that many dog owners are dealing with it. And this brings me back to the idea that you need to provide your dogs uh, daily five essential needs. Whether you have a puppy or you have a dog, dog, you have to provide your dogs daily five essential needs. Same thing ha happens with puppies, but in a different level. So I was just saying that you need to learn about these uh, five essential needs that you can learn on my online course. Uh, a dog's five essential needs are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. So you're, you have to provide this for your puppy. So what does it have to do with puppy biting? If you don't provide these five essential needs for your puppy, your puppy is going to bite you, okay? Because it's telling you that I need to have these five things on daily basis provided for me. Your dog or your beagle doesn't have a can't talk to you, can't tell you that it needs. And I'm telling you, based on my uh, ex uh, experience throughout the past 15 years that I've been working with dogs and dog owners, this is the part that most dog owners miss. You know, they miss uh, understanding that you can't just say, okay, this is how you're gonna just stop a puppy to bite. You want me to say to you that, okay, just say the the magic word stop and your puppy is going to stop biting that's not the reality you know that's not how it's done you know that's not going to happen the reason your puppy is biting you is because you're not being a responsible educated dog owner that's the reality and, and it's it's mean and it's rough and it's and it's a uh, the, uh, hard for me to say it, but that's what it is. Any dog owner has to face this. Any dog owner has to hear this from somebody. Nobody tells you, and I'm trying to tell you in very nice, gentle way that your dog is pissed because you're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs. Therefore, your pu puppy is biting you. It's not as simple as you think it is. The solution is not just to give you a magic word and tell you to do this and done, right? You have to be a responsible, educated dog owner in order to provide your dog's daily five essential needs. And you have to learn this. That's why I'm offering my online course so you can join in and learn all about it because Uneducated dog lovers are just dog lovers. They just love dogs. It's like, you know, I own a car, but I don't know how to drive it. You own a car, owning a car, it's not a big deal. The fact is, can you drive this car at it, the way it should be driven? There's a Ferrari and there is um, BMW, right? Ferraris have to be driven why the way a Ferrari has been built. You can't just drive it on 50 kilometers or 50 miles an hour on the streets. 
you have to drive it on the highway. There's a highway dedicated for this car that you, you know it, you can go and drive. You have to drive it for the purpose that it's been built, right? So if you have a dog, you have to you do your part so your dog can give you the back the what you want, right? It's not just owning a dog not just having a beagle or a dog it's knowing how to deal with this dog how to what steps you need to do take you what you need to do in order for this dog to be happy healthy and well behaved and in order to do that you have to provide this daily five essential needs exercise training socialization care and affection if you don't provide those your puppy is going to be biting your puppy is going to be digging the house your puppy is going to chew the house you're going to your puppy is going to ruin the, your life. Your puppy is going to destroy the house. Your puppy is going to injure you, pull blood, all kinds of damages, right? And then you're going to have a dog who's ha who has behavioral issues, is aggressive and all that, just because you didn't address the biting. Biting is just a sign. It's just a message from your dog that uh, mom or dad, I'm not getting my daily five essential needs. By saying that now, how do you stop a puppy from biting is by providing him proper amount of exercise and stimulation, as well as training and socialization and care and affection. Now, if you want your puppy to stop biting, you have to uh, provide mental and physical stimulation. That means a good amount of play, good amount of uh, exercise, physical exercise as well, mental exercise as well, which is training, physical uh, exercise, uh, exercise as well, you know, just playing, taking it for a walk, things like that. And your puppy is chewing and biting is because it's also teething, you know, they're, they're teething as well. So you have to know what teething means, why dogs are teething. Right? Why, why do puppies have this problem? Right? Uh, why do they bite? The reason they bite is because they're teething. What does that mean? That means they're replacing the puppy teeth with uh, adult teeth. You have to, re, re, you know, understand that, and you have to help them to uh, deal with it. And the way you help them is you provide chew toys, you provide raw bones for them to chew, you provide enough physical and mental stimulation so they don't uh, focus on that uh, annoying thing that is happening in their mouth, in their gums, and you know, they're being annoyed. So they're telling you that they need help. So that's how you stop a puppy from biting. And you have a German Shepherd as well. So we have a question from Tavlin Bijoy. Uh, my beagle puppy is three months old. When he is locked in his room, he bangs on the door, cries, please, if we are doing it like a punishment, may ha may how to put your beagle in his crate. Uh, so Tavlin, you know, so this is why I suggest you, you know, you need a lot of help. Okay, so if you want, if you want to, you know, understand exactly what to do and what not to do, uh, you need to you need to join my um, puppy training 101. It seems like you need a lot of help. You, you you're not you know again you have a puppy you have a dog and you don't know how to deal with it right. This is one of the problems that you have. Uh, one of many problems that you have, and I'm sure there are hundreds of other issues that you have with your dog. So you need to. Uh, take advantage of this and join my online puppy training course, which is again on sale until Sunday the 4th. Okay, so just to tell you that by the way, there is that option, but you can't just lock your puppy in a crate and hope that everything is going to well be well. Puppies are very sensitive, a three month old puppy needs. Exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. That's what your puppy needs. Okay? You can't 
if you want to put your puppy in a crate, you have to make sure that your puppy had enough exercise, training, and socialization, and care, and affection, and then you put it in the crate. It's like me, for example, if you're a parent, you can't just tell your kid, go in the room and lock the door and say, you know, stay there, and because of blah, 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 because of this and that. You can't do that. You have to, instead of punishing like that and giving time out in the room, you better educate your kid. You better take care of it. You know, instead of band-aid solution that is, you know, punishing the puppy, putting in a crate and thinking that the problem is going to go away and your puppy is going to learn something. No, your puppy is actually going to learn that, you don't like it, you don't love it, it's gonna hate you, it's gonna start hating you, you're gonna be disconnecting yourself from your puppy, your puppy is gonna not trust you anymore if you do that, if you punish your puppy. A three month old puppy needs a lot of support, a lot of care, a lot of attention, a lot of interaction. That's the age that you wanna build uh, relationship with the puppy. If you miss this opportunity, if this window of opportunity, you're gonna have a dog who's gonna have a lot of behavioral issues in, in future, and you're gonna have a hard time dealing with it. If you have a hard time dealing with it now, imagine what happens in few months, right? So, Make sure that you are focused on providing information and interaction and one-on-one -on -one rather than just put the problems aside, put problem on the side in the crate and we'll deal with it later. You know, you can't just put your kid in the timeout in the room and hope that your kid is going to learn something. No, your kid is going to say, you know what, mom, dad, I hate you. I this is you are the worst because you're punishing me. But instead of let's say your puppy has done something or your kid has done something wrong, right? Let's say your kid was, I don't know, did something wrong, right? Instead of putting it in the room, sit down and talk to your kid, right? See how can you can help the kid to deal with the problem. Why is it that this problem is happening? Why is it that this problem has happened? And deal with it and help the kid to, to figure out another way of sol solving this problem. Same thing with puppies, but unfortunately you can't have a talk with them. You can't ch chat with them. You can't sit down and have a talk with them. So you instead you have to you have to prevent it from happening. What that means is you have to provide your puppies exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection in order to prevent it from happening. So your puppy can't talk to you, right? Your, your puppy can't talk to you. Instead, I'm telling you what your puppy is telling you, okay? It's telling you that it needs those five daily essential needs. And locking them down in the crate is the worst thing that you can do. Crate should be used only for at night to go to sleep or during the day to have a nap. If your puppy, if you have provided your puppies daily five essential needs, then your puppy would be uh, automatically going in a crate. You don't even have to uh, ask them. They will go in a crate because they want to go in a crate. For example, my own puppy, Annie, uh, this one, right? I have a crate in the office. I have a crate at home and it's open, right? And I provide her her daily five essential needs. And midday, she goes in there on her own, goes and sleeps in there. At night, uh, around 8.30, 9 o'clock, she goes, good night. She goes in the crate on her own. And if she had the ability to close the gate and lock it down, she would have done that. She would do that, but she uh, but I she goes in there because voluntarily she says, you know what? 
I had my daily five essential needs. I'm satisfied. I'm happy. I'm going to go in. I'm done. I want to rest, right? So that's how it should be. I spend a lot of time and energy and uh, focus to provide my dog's daily five essential needs. And you have to be providing that. Uh, Suzanne Fenwick is asking if the course is online, what's the schedule like? Uh, uh, and all that. Uh, let me see if I can see the question to bring it up on. Okay, Suzanne, I, I can't see uh, the question at the moment. I'm quickly going through the question. There are tons of questions. Uh, I can't see uh, exactly, but let me ask, answer your question. Yeah, the, que the, the course is online. It's run on your own pace. What that means is what happens is you register and then the content is there for you to, all the content is available and you just go uh, at your pace, at your speed that you go. I suggest, and, and that's the that's the thing, the difference in this, the course, the difference in this course is that I'm always there to support you. I'm always available. And I suggest you to, you know, go through one lesson and then accomplish that and then go to the next lesson and on and on. And the support is what it's very important. What I do is I'm always av available when you register to answer your questions by email anytime. Uh, I offer three uh, half an hour free uh, consultation sessions as well. You can we can do using the Zoom, and we I talk to you in, in person. I watch your dog. I watch you and your dog to work together. Um, I show you if there's something that you're doing it wrong. You know, a lot of support. There's lots of support there. So what happens is you watch on your own convenience whenever you feel like it. And, you know, I suggest to, because there's a lots of content, I suggest you to put aside, uh, you know, some time during the week, uh, maybe, you know, half an hour, every few days just sit down uh, learn what you have to learn and then put another 15 minutes to work with your dog or your puppy uh, and you know the the course is so well organized and i'm not bragging it's just the you know in this day and age you know with all technology that we have i've created a, a, a very well organized course that it's so simple for you to go through the content. And I would say 80, 90% of my students that are registered at the moment, you know, they hardly use any of the support option that I offer because it's so clear and so organized that they know exactly what they need to do. So yes, it's very, um, very simple, full of, important content contents that every dog owner has to learn so yes everything is online you register online uh, once you register uh, you get permission to use all the content and uh, you get the all the contents available and it's available forever as long as this uh, i have this uh, business going on you are uh, allowed to use it Hopefully that answered your question. Um, so Sachin, I just talked about um, you know puppy biting. So go back and watch that. Um, uh, I just talked about it. You know this is this is I I, I feel bad answering this question, but I think I have to. Yasna Ajum Anjum Majumdar is asking, is it okay to hit your dog sometimes even if they don't listen to us after we give them treats or toys or the ways you taught us? If you're 
in that level that you have to hit your dog, that means you haven't been clear enough. If you are that level that you're hitting your dog, that means you are not emotionally balanced. The reason you're hitting a dog is because you're upset, because you're angry, because things are not going the way you want. And being selfish that way is the worst way of being a parent, dog owner, a teacher. You can't be that way. You can't be uh, emotional, emotional when you are a teacher. Because if you allow emotions to take over what you are supposed to do, then you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So punishing a dog, hitting a dog is the worst thing that you can do. Not only a dog, but hitting a kid, human, anything. When when you start being physical with any uh, with your dog, that means you are out of the range. You are out. You are not thinking properly. You are not. You are not thinking right. You're not thinking the way you should be. You are not balanced yourself. If you if you are to that level that you have to hit somebody or some dog or something, that means you need to stop. You need to stop the training at that moment. If you still if, if you feel that you're that level that it frustrates frust, frustrates you that you have to get into that level of hitting a dog or punishing a dog physically, then it's a sign that you have to stop. You are not balanced enough, uh, ready to go and continue. So that's one part. The other part is if you are getting to that level that you have to hit the dog, that means you are not a good trainer. You are not a good uh, teacher. A good teacher wouldn't rely on punishment or physical punishment. A good teacher can explain what to do and how to do things, and the student is going to learn. If you can't teach, that means you're not ready to be a teacher. You have to work on your skills to be a good teacher. In your case, you have to be a good dog owner. You have to be a good dog trainer. You have to be a good, educated dog lover. That's why, again, I offer you my online courses so you can become an educated dog lover. Because if you're not, then you're going to make tons of mistakes and you're going to make all kinds of unnecessary mistakes and moves and actions that not only is not going to help your dog to learn, but you're going to ruin the relationship that you have with your dog. So if, if the toys and treats don't work, that means you're not doing it the right way. Okay. That's why, again, it's important for you to know what to do. You know, watch my videos, join my online course, learn what you need to do exactly how you need to do. You know, being doing the the tasks physically is something different, and emotionally being ready to do it is different. Emotionally, you have to be educated. You have to know exactly what you need to do. So again, I'm going to bring car example. If I want to teach you how to drive, if I'm emotional and I, and I tell you that, hey, sit down and just drive the car, just drive it, just just change the gear. And if I do that, you're not going to learn how to drive, right? A good teacher, a good instructor is a person who says, explains, you know, this is a car, this is a vehicle that you have, it has a, all kinds of uh, mechanical components in there and this is how cars run you put the gas gas goes in the engine you know all those details explain those first of all and second of all explain what the gears are what the uh, 
what the buttons do explain that part as well and then say you know what are you emotionally ready to drive this car are you relaxed do you know what you need to do right and as a teacher do i know how to teach this person or am i just yelling and uh, doing whatever if i don't know how to drive myself i can't teach somebody to drive that's the thing All right, we have a question from Kanav Malik. My beagle just turned one. He gets really excited when someone comes home and starts shouting. Can you tell me what can I do? Uh, the shouting, you mean, starts barking. What happens is you haven't te taught your um, beagle what the process is so if a person comes home what does ha what has to happen you haven't taught this to your beagle okay your, so your beagle doesn't know what the process is so in from your beagle's perspective is a hey, stranger came in uh, i either like him or i hate him uh, you know for example uh, or is this person uh, causing me ex stress or excitement or all that so all those causes your beagle to bark right and the bark is is just a warning to you that i am responding to this situation whether this person or these people who, these people who came in the house they either stress me out or they excite me or they make me fear or they make me get you know happy right and the emotions are expressed by barking, right? So it's telling you, first of all, how it feels. Now, how do you address this? Is by teaching your beagle that this is what I want you to do when the guests come. So the guests come, what is the, the picture that you want to have uh, when the guests come? You want to have a, a beagle who goes and either nicely goes and sits and says, hi and people pet your beagle and walk in right something like that right if you want that you have to teach your beagle so one of the things that you have to teach your beagle are three commands sit stay and maybe even come right recall command you don't have to focus on recall command but it's good to teach the beagle so sit and stay is a command that you have to teach your beagle and you have to have 100% results when you're teaching your beagle to sit and stay. So that means when guests come, your beagle says, oh, the, do the, you know, the doorbell went on. So my, go my uh, task is to sit and stay for the guests to come in and greet me and do they go in instead of barking and going excited and running around and all that. So you have to practice this with your beagle. So you have to practice it in at the times that you, your beagle is not actually dealing with the guests. It has to be when you, you your beagle is calm and relaxed, which you can ask your um, friends and family members to participate in uh, mock, you know, just a uh, training session and say, you know what, this is when we're going to pretend that we're coming home inside of the house or ringing the bell and then we ask the beagle to sit and stay and practice that when the when not the real actual guests are coming you have to do it with your friends and family members throughout the days for a few weeks practice sit and say this is what we're going to do the guests come sit my beagle sits and stay you practice it over and over until the real guests come and then see how it acts right so that's how you deal with that situation good question uh apur apurva is asking i have a big old it's poop pee poo and peep in the house how can we get rid of it there are reasons why that happens is because you haven't taken the steps of training your puppy what to do with its uh, you know, physical needs, which is pee and poo. 
you have to take your uh, beagle out every two hours, let it do its business outside where you want it to do, no, not in the house. When you take it outside, you show it where you want it to go. Uh, and when it's, if you take it outside, if it does it, good. If it doesn't, you bring it home, um, keep it on leash or in a crate, and then try it five minutes later, 10 minutes later, take it outside. You just have to keep repeating this until your beagle understand that this is where they want me to do outside, to want to do my business. And the other reason this happens is because I'm sure you're feeding your beagle kibble or dry food. And when you feed your beagle uh, kibble or dry food, they will pee and poo all the time. In order to avoid it, you need to change your beagle's puppy, your beagle's diet uh, right away, which is to feed fresh food. Fresh food means either home cook, you make it at home, fresh meals, and or raw diet. If you change the diet, kibble or dry food, they force your dog to drink a lot of water. Therefore, they have accidents all the time. And because it's kibble and dry food, it's full of uh, fibers and uh, full of um, carbs. It goes in and comes out. They poop a lot. So to prevent all this, you have to change the diet. Okay, so good. Asawari is answering the question that I asked in the beginning of the show, uh, which was, why is it that in India, beagles are very popular? And apparently in India, beagles are marketed as a perfect breed for small apartments. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, they are, they are good breeds to live in apartment, uh, but not all day <laughs> they can't be stuck in the apartment every day uh, apurva uh, Apur apurva uh, just i just explained about the pm putting a savari as uh, because are kind of easy to manage space and feeding requirements but we are discovering it's the other way around <laughs> yes i'm surprised that they actually uh, market them as you know good apartment dogs they're not but you know i understand now Uh, Bullet is asking, how can I try train my beagle to run jog with me? He's currently three months old. First of all, at three months old, you can jog uh, with uh, that age. It's too young. Um, it's just not, they're physically not there yet. They're not suitable for jogging and running. So you have to wait until your beagle is at least a year and older till you start doing this, uh, just because puppies are still developing, you don't want to put pressure and force in them. And to uh, allow your beagle to run with you and jog with you during the next year, uh, you know, or, you know, nine months that you're working uh, on your beagle, puppy, beagle, uh, make sure to train it, you know, all the commands has to be perfect, you know, all the six, seven commands that you have to teach, you have to make it perfect. Uh, again, take advantage of my online course to learn those commands and much more. You have, to, you have to have the command, especially the heel command comes handy. Heel command means your, your beagle is going to be walking right beside you or running right beside you with the head up, without sniffing, without doing anything, all that. You have to teach a beagle to do that if you want to jog and run, and especially if you want them to walk properly with you, you have to teach a beagle the heel command. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, so I we only have five more minutes and I have to finish the show by 10 o'clock. Uh, and I'm gonna answer as many questions I, uh, as fast as I can.
Arm 19, I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I don't think beagles are aggressive, you know, unless the beagle was, the, your beagle has, has been really in a horrible life, they will become aggressive. But it doesn't mean that beagles can't not be aggressive. They will be become aggressive if you, if, ev if um, everything is um, ideal or not pro provided for a beagle, it will become aggressive. So they, it's not that they're aggressive, they're just excited. And when they get excited, they do things that it sounds and feels and looks like aggressive. Uh, you know, biting and things like that. It's just a matter of them being excited. And why is it that they get excited? Is because you're not providing their their daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. You have to provide these in order for your beagle to be happy, healthy, and well behaved. Uh, can we have dogs in apartment? Yes, you can, but again, you have to provide your dogs daily five essential needs. You know, the, the, the concept that you have to have a big fence yard for a beagle is not true. And for any dog, actually. Fenced yard doesn't mean that it's okay. You can leave, you know, you can't have a fish in a fish tank and hope that that fish is going to live happily ever after, right? A dog in a fenced yard, no matter how big or small the fence, fence yard is, it doesn't mean is, uh, is, is, is great, is ideal. Uh, a, a fenced yard is a fish tank, right? A dog needs to go outside. They need to go travel. They need to go move around. They need to go explore the, the neighborhood and everywhere else. They can be in the fenced yard only, right? So an, an apartment as well, they can't be just inside the apartment all day long. You have to provide them exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. I live in an apartment, I live in a condo, but I provide, you know, it's doable. Uh, it's just that you have to have, uh, you have to provide their daily five essential needs. Uh, Mayur is asking, what do you mean by socialization? Socialization is when you expose your beagle or your dog to anything that may or may not come across in, the, in its life. Vacuum cleaner, uh, everything, the, you know, the cars, uh, um, people, dogs. You have to make sure that your puppy or your dog uh, interacts with that subject and has a positive reaction, right? Instead of being aggressive or being feared from it. So it has to be uh, uh, having positive experience when it's uh, socializing with other objects or people or dogs or creatures or whatever it is. So you have to provide socialization every day. Every day you have to introduce something new to your dog. That's why it's important to take your beagle outside and expose it to everything and anything so they can have a good positive uh, experience with those. So in future, they don't react to them. Okay, that's what um, socialization means. Oh, okay, I see the question now, Su Susan's question. Uh, and that brings me to... Uh, the end of the show, and I, as I said, the online course is online. Yes, you register online, and you go through the content uh, in on your term, in your comfort, at home, or wherever you are. You have the content uh, forever. Uh, the sale is until Sunday the fourth, and will be uh, all the prices are going to back go back to normal. If you want to take advantage, take advantage on. Uh, of the course uh, this weekend and I will see you inside the course and that's it for today unfortunately I, I couldn't get to all the answer to answer all your questions 
but I'll try and I'll be back next week again. We'll talk about dogs more, about beagles and everything. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well. And um, hit the like as button as well. And if you enjoyed this show, make sure to uh, come back uh, next week and we'll talk more. And check out my Sunday's video is going to be about beagles and how to groom a beagle. Hopefully, I'll see you then. And until next time, have fun with your dog.